everybody. Welcome fellow guitar ninjas and the Eddie Van Halen enthusiasts. I'm Jeff Young and this is Guitar Lesson Sessions Live. Glad to have you with me today. We're gonna have some fun. All you need is a guitar and standard e-tuning. We'll talk about that in a minute. Quiet amp, maybe, a little practice amp. It's best to practice with a clean sound with no distortion so you can hear all the all the little glitches and ticks and annoying things that sometimes distortion covers up. We want to make sure to practice with a clean tone. I've got my Friedman here today. My little pedal board. We'll talk about that later, but glad to have you. We're going to talk about Mr. Edward Van Halen and his many, many innovative guitar playing tactics, habits. First, there was Jimi Hendrix, and I kind of I was late because I was a little young to get in on the Hendrix thing. I got in on Hendrix a little later. Michael Shanker was probably my first big guy, Montrose, Jimmy Page, but when Van Halen 1 came out, you know, if you were anything like me, your whole world got shook <laughs> and your whole guitar playing life was changed forever. And I was for sure an Eddie Van Halen obsessed <laughs> little lad. And we'll talk about through talk about that more through the show. Many was a day that I skipped school, stayed at home while my parents were at work with my turntable, my trusty Van Halen albums and a guitar. And I figured out if I slowed that turntable down from 33 to 16 RPMs, it was half the speed, still in tune with the guitar. And although the notes sounded like they were trudging through mud, you could slowly decipher some of the faster parts. That's how we had to do it back in the day, back in the day before there was cool guitar magazines like this one right here. All right, may I approach? Guitar Edge, this is an old one, but uh, an oldie but goodie. And uh, look at this guy right here. I'd say that headline about sums it up. Sudden impact, indeed. Edward Van Halen burst on the scene like a volcano literally erupting, did he not? Love that early shot of the band in the rehearsals, right? And he's got his uh, the big bullet thing there, with all his effects and stuff in, on the left. There's some live Van Halen. Well, we get everybody a chance to uh, tune in, get the guitars out, and settle back. Just like to always do a little show and tell here at the beginning. We'll do plenty of playing throughout this next uh, 90 minutes, maybe more. I don't got anywhere to go, how about you? So, uh, very nice magazine there. Check this out, my friends. Have you seen this book? Ever seen this book with Mr. EVH on the front cover? Mr. Randy Rhodes on the back cover. Guys, uh, yours truly is also in here, but that's not the subject of today. Today's subject at hand, Mr. Van, Mr. Van Halen, all right? This is a cool book. He's got the shark fin guitar there. Very similar to the shark fin guitar. What do we have here? Who's that? Who that? 
And it's a little 20 something JY. Maybe I wasn't quite 20 there. If you heard the uh, sordid story on Music Without Boundaries, my radio show of how I got kicked out of my house. My mother kicked me out for dyeing my hair platinum, like Randy Rhodes on the Diary of a Madman tour, or kind of Mick Ralph's. Randy, I think, copped his hair. He's a big Mick Ralph's fan. And uh, I'm not showing you this picture because of my platinum blonde hair, but for you to notice this, notice that Charvel guitar. I'm back in Dayton, Ohio, but I was on point, man. I checked on the back of the Van Halen One album cover, and I saw that uh, Eddie was using Charvel guitars, so I proceeded to order one. And if you notice right there, I was one of the first cats, for sure, the first cat in the Midwest to have a Floyd Rose tremolo system. You'll see it on my guitar today. I saw that thing at the Nut Eddie's guitar. I don't know what it, that is, but I got to have it. And it's to keep the uh, strings from slipping and moving as you lay pressure with the whammy bar keeps your guitar in tune. So uh, just a little confirmation how much of an Eddie Van Halen freak this guy was coming right out of the gate. Pretty, pretty big on Mr. EVH. All right. Oh, and I didn't show you the one picture I wanted to show you right here. Pardon me. Don't want to miss this one. Don't want to miss this one, Eddie Van Halen live. First Van Halen tour. I was in the front row. This was taken by my uh, buddy who was near me, but I was actually right in front of Eddie. He was a little more in front of Roth, but check that out. That's a great. Nice to have you here. Glad you're uh, enjoying the lesson so far. We're just. Just getting warmed up here, just a little show and tell. I'm pretty sure that tour, Van Halen, opening for Sabbath, was the reason that uh, Ozzy fell by the wayside. <laughs> and uh, that, did, that did give us Randy Rhodes. That did give us Randy Rhodes. So that's a good thing. Again, we want our guitars in standard tuning, right? Standard tuning. I got it, just a clean sound here for you today. Is that cool? You can hear that, people? All right, so let's start with the Van Halen. I, I can give you a little game here, if need be. All right, but let's keep it clean so we can really hear what we're doing here. All right, Van Halen was a player that was renowned for breaking all the rules we're going to learn that throughout this lesson. I remember there was a Van Halen uh, magazine article. I think that was the title of it. Before we get going, I want to uh, show you one more magazine. Some of you might remember this one. Fingerprints. I had a column in here and I got to profile Eddie Van Halen. Uh, some of our musical examples from today will be taken right from this, uh, this article. Let me find it because I wanted to read you just a little, little opening here. Bear with me. Here we go. Here's the article. My fingerprints column. There's a nice picture of Van Halen. And I started it off with a poem, a poem. 
that I thought would be appropriate for today and for our lesson to set us in the mood. As you guys are tuning your guitars, and we just want to enter the arena of Van Halen appropriately here. So if I may, the poem goes a little something like this. One and the same breeze passes over the pines on the mountain and the oak trees in the valley. And why do they give different notes? No thinking, no reflecting, perfect emptiness. Yet something therein moves following its own course. And I think that's so appropriate. That, that's so eddy right there. I call it become artless art and the Zen of Van Halen. A great Chinese philosopher once noted, an artist expression is his soul made apparent, his schooling as well as his cool being exhibited Behind every motion, the music of his soul is made visible. Submitted for your approval, when Mr. Edward Van Halen, pioneer and premier rock guitarist of unprecedented proportions. Little Eddie Van Halen. Shall we dive into him? Shall we dive deep into Edward? Cheers, everybody. I got my... Uh, Watermelon juice. Today I'm going to play the Van Halen on my new Dean ML Dying from Hell guitar. It's actually great for Van Halen tunes, very chunky. I just changed the strings and wanted to mention digging these strings. I know Derek Trucks uses these, I know uh, Dime had a uh, signature set. They're very clear and in tune, very in tune sounding. I think you'll notice. I've got my action set really high, more like a jazz guitar player. Maybe a lot of the guys who uh, play rock tend to set the action really low. Gary Moore is one exception. He sets his action really high. He likes to fight the guitar, as, as do I, and I think it sounds really good. I can always lower it. I just put these strings on last night. So I wanted to start up a little high, especially since we're doing an Eddie Van Halen song that was based on acoustic guitar today in the form of Spanish Fly. So I thought that would be appropriate. And uh, the lower your action, the thinner your guitar sounds. Uh, and the strings get a little rubber band-esque. So I... I'd like to have the guitar action as high as I possibly can without it being brutal to play. It is a little tricky when we get into the tapping. You gotta really use a little more strength to do that, but I'm willing to fight that, uh, to fight for it, so to speak. <laughs> for that extra fat, meaty, beefy sound, right? So let's talk a little bit about uh, Eddie Van Halen's rhythm technique, just as an entree as we're tuning here. Start with something very simple. Uh, ain't talking about love. Is there more than two chords in this song? Two, three chords. A minor to G. And if you're an advanced player, stay with me. This lesson's gonna be great for beginners, intermediate, advanced, whatever your level. There's going to be a lot of details uh, interspliced and inter intermingled throughout the lesson. We'll use Van Halen's licks and melodies and songs as a launching pad to analyze not only some of his techniques and how he approached it, but maybe give you some concepts into overall playing of guitar an effortless guitar playing that might make it easier for you to perform uh, these sections uh, a little bit quicker and uh, with less stress in your bodies and have more fun because that's the 
That's the name of the game around here at uh, Guitar Lesson Sessions is fun is first and foremost. And the other mantra that I want to put out here right now, because when I said Spanish fly, some people who know the song might have got a little scared, like I'm not ready for that. My advanced uh, people are, are ready and chomping at the bit, but never fear, never fear. I learned in a very important lesson from Steve Morris back in the day. Let me do something right here. I can... Uh, there we go. I learned a very important lesson from Steve Morse back in the day. He said he rarely ever practices any of his pieces up to speed while he's at home in his bedroom or home studio. Uh, slow equals fast was the mantra that he put out there that day. And it's a mantra that I've lived by ever since. I practice most of the time slowly and especially in a guitar lesson setting like this or when I'm teaching. And I might uh, mention right now, if you're interested, if you enjoy the lesson, I do offer Skype private lessons, really cool one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, sometimes I got a couple buddies that take together. I teach students all over the world and we can dive a lot deeper in the Skype lessons than, than I can right here. But always with my students, and especially from watching YouTube videos and noticing uh, some of the other folks teaching method, especially I think when they get to parts that they're not quite sure about, they just gla glaze over it, gloss over it, or play it really fast. It's, it's kind of like this, or Eddie would never play that the same way twice, so just kind of do this. I'd like to get us a lot closer to the uh, home base than that. So. Again, I spent a lot of time figuring this stuff out note for note. Even got to put it into use some years later. Uh, although I never got to meet Eddie Van Halen, I did get to jam with Michael Anthony. Uh, there was an award show in Las Vegas, the Rock Gods Awards. And it was an award show for players were being honored that definitely rock, contributed to their bands, but maybe weren't the focal point of the band, maybe uh, deserve a little bit more recognition than they've got in the mainstream. Michael Anthony, surely one of those. Not only a fine bass player, but the entire vocal harmony sound of those early Van Halen albums relied on Michael Anthony's great, you know, great playing and great licks. And once I see it, you can see that right there. Let's show this great album right there. There you go. There's a great one to pick up. My favorite album is Fair Warning. But uh, Women and Children First, is, that had me uh, in front of the turntable for some days, weeks, months, years. So I got to play uh, Ain't Talking About Love, Run With The Devil, Everybody Wants Some, and Somebody Get Me A Doctor with Michael Anthony. I will pin those videos in the comments section. I will also pin it in the description. If you have any questions about the lesson, anything I covered, if you want to request some future lessons, we're going to be doing profiles on other guitar players. I've got Ingve Malmsteen coming up next week. Uh, but I won't just be focusing on guitar players. Some of our lessons will focus on specific guitar techniques. For example, I got a request from someone who said, are you gonna be covering the George Benson picking technique? And of course I will. That's the technique that I use. And we'll dive deep into that in its own specific lesson. Maybe we'll see a little tease of that today and through the other lessons, but that's, that's a topic that deserves its own lesson. So today we focus on Eddie Van Halen, his style, his licks, and again, whether you want to play each of these songs note for note, I mean, the point isn't so you can play Spanish Fly note for note, although you may be at a party and see a guitar in the corner and pick it up and want to stun the unsuspecting bystanders. The point is, is that as we break down each of the phrases, each cell, you're going to find licks, motifs, 
all kinds of interesting guitar practices that you can employ in your own playing even if you never play a Van Halen song I hope these lessons will give you something that's going to take your playing higher okay so that's the goal so we're going to start right here as we tune up to E standard tuning again Van Halen on his Early albums, some songs are tuned down, some songs tuned to standard, but we, if you try to figure out the Van Halen, you will have some problems. <laughs> if you uh, try to play it in E, he doesn't tune to E or E flat, it's E quarter flat, okay? That made it tricky to figure out when I first started listening to the Van Halen. I was like, what is he doing? I'm not even gonna be able to play this guy's style. But once I figured out he tuned down and he had those Peterson tuners, the strobe tuner, that let him get like right in between E and E flat. And I think part of the reason he did it is to make it hard for cats like you and me <laughs> to figure out his stuff. I remember his tapping that, you know, he did. He used to turn his back to the audience when he played the whiskey and on the Sunset Strip so people couldn't figure out what he did, which is pretty smart. When I first heard that, I figured it out in picking and, and notes. I didn't know what he was doing, so I was playing the whole thing the hard way. <laughs> but uh, once I figured out about the tapping thing, things got a lot easier from there on, right? So we're gonna talk about Eddie's tactic, his influences that will become apparent as we dive into this. He always mentions Eric Clapton, especially in his early interviews. Clapton was, uh, a huge influence, his early band Mammoth did so many cream tunes, right? You can hear Blackmore, especially I hear Blackmore on that first and second album a lot. I hear a lot of Blackmore, some Montrose, Ronnie Montrose, Billy Gibbons, hearing a lot of Billy Gibbons in there. You know, especially you hear uh, not only the pick squealing, Where he's touching the strings with just a bit of the pick but also I mean you hear the song bottoms up right what's that Van Halen lick mm -hmm. very similar to some Lagrange right very similar Okay, so let's start out with a very simple A minor progression. On the first tour, that, that photograph I saw, I saw Eddie play Ain't Talking About Love in this A minor position here, right? And that's the way you'll find it in most tab in all the guitar magazine, Van Halen songs book, and he did play it in this position on the first tour, but on the second tour, I was front row again on Van Halen too, and I noticed he'd remapped his finger and he transposed it up into the fifth position, into our A minor position, and he was playing it here, which I went home immediately after the show, picked up my guitar, and I was like, why is he playing it up here? It sounds a lot fatter. It's a really fat sound. Check this out. If we're starting in A minor, he's going to be outlining this beautiful A minor chord here with an open A and a downstroke. We'll be doing all downstrokes this time around. Starting on your fifth string A open. Then you're going to play the octave at the seventh fret on the D string. Then the C, your relative major to A minor, on the G string at the fifth fret, back to the A, so we got. And he kind of mutes it like that, right? Then he plays E, F, then another 
another minor third interval. Advanced players, stick with me. It's going to get a lot harder real quick. Let's let the beginners have a little time here. So you hear that beginning of uh, Ain't Talking About Love sound a little bit like this, right? Right? It's so cool how he was very uh, thoughtful about his fingerings. It's the second finger down and that's ready. I mean, maybe that's why he chose this C as his next note. So he could go, right? So that's the intro, fat style to Ain't Talking About Love. Try it yourself up that high, compared to play it in first position and see how you like it. Because I like it and when you see the, uh, Ain't talking about love video with Michael Anthony and myself jamming. That's how I played it. You'll see it live. And uh, we did a little jam in the middle of the tune. It was pretty cool. So stay tuned for that at the end of the lesson. All right. So let's talk a little bit about Eddie's picking style and his right hand and really, not just Eddie's style, but what I would consider a proper picking style for any player, okay? This is a huge thing. Beginner, intermediate, or advanced, how you pick from the right hand and where the motion initiates. I see so many guys, even a couple great players that I really love, stiff-arming it, as I call it. And this is really going to make your playing a lot harder than it needs to be. You're working a lot harder. You're moving a big bone, you know, this way that doesn't, you know, it's not ever going to give you that kind of fast speed and keyword fluency that you're looking for. The key thing about picking is that it's a rolling motion like that. It's a pivot, pivot. Pivot, just like you're screwing a screwdriver in, okay? Very critical. None of this, all like this. So when you hear Eddie doing uh, maybe his signature tremolo, and again, he used to pick with his second finger, but he switched. I, I, when, I when Van Halen came out, just as an aside, I'd pick you know, with my first finger holding the pick, I saw him doing it, so I switched. For a couple years, I was playing with the second finger, but, you know, I eventually switched back, at, and uh, Eddie has switched since then, and uh, probably wisely so. I mean, he's probably happy that he switched. I don't know why he ever started playing like that, but uh, self-taught over in Holland. <laughs> but when you see Eddie pick, and he's doing that fast tremolo, that's the motion that he's doing. It's like, again, screwing a screwdriver in. And so if you're gonna... Right? Right, and it doesn't have to be real hard motion. It's just that you're rolling your arm. Right? Let's give an example here. Light up the sky from Van Halen 2, the opening track. Let's use this opening Eddie Van Halen lick. It's perfect fifths. Right here starting on the D string at E and your second note is B on the G string. You're just climbing like this and pivoting the arm like this. This is a great exercise. All the way up to the 14th fret. Or if you want to run it in reverse, that's what you're hearing. Michael Anthony starting here. And descending. 
Eddie ascending with this motion. Right? That's the old, it's just the Angus Young, Malcolm Young rock and roll chord. Classical players play it like this. You can even add a bass note. Rock and roll cats, we play it like this, right? So Eddie's basically in that intro lick, just leaving this note out, the pinky note, and just rocking back and forth on the strings. Okay? So that's a great exercise just to get this going. Again, you could just sit at home with your tremolo. work that on each individual string, right? Just getting that motion, okay? One other thing I want to say about picking at this juncture that's so critical. I show this to every student early on first lesson. It's very critical and even most advanced players have never stopped to think about this. I've never had a teacher teach me this. <laughs> and it's kind of critical. It's kind of critical guitar intel. If you, can you see my uh, acoustic guitar back there? My Alvarez, or imagine an acoustic guitar in your mind. If you think about the back and sides of your acoustic guitar, that's like the speaker cabinet, right? It's literally a speaker cabinet. The top is where all the sound comes from. That would be like the cone. That would be like the cone of your speaker, okay? That's why on a Les Paul, say they'll have a mahogany body with a maple top because they know that that top is going to give a different sound signature to the tone, okay? As we grew up watching guitar players in the early days, I mean, from the Beatles strumming, you know, the people you see on Hee Haw and late night talk shows and this whole motion of strumming. And we get this feeling that it's a very up and down ceiling to floor maneuver and even the term downstroke, upstroke, kind of a misnomer. And it gets us in this very up and down method of picking, which is not happening for the tone of your guitar and it's not happening for keeping your picking clean because you're going to bump into other strings. Let me show you what I mean. And especially if you learned how to play with a pick and don't play finger style, this is why it might have alluded you to this point. Whereas people who begin playing finger style as their first approach to guitar and say they had a flamenco teacher or a classical teacher, that teacher is going to impart the knowledge, the key knowledge that a guitar, it's much like a trampoline right in this area where you're bouncing. You want to get the guitar working like this, like a speaker. First of all, the audience is there, right? The sound goes that way, not that way, not that way. Everything needs to work like this. A speaker works like this, giving the sound to the audience. A guitar works like this, okay? So we don't want to make the motion of our pick stroke make the strings go up and down. Because what we have here is basically six bows. If you think of a bow and arrow, side by side with the pressure, it's tied off here, tied off here, right? And of course, if you were going to try to shoot a arrows straight in that direction. You're not going to pull the twine this way. You're not going to pull the twine this way. You're going to pull it back, which is what you want to do on the guitar. You want to depress the string this way. Depress the string. That's the only way you can get the tone out of a classical or a flamenco guitar. You start bouncing. It's just like you jump on the trampoline. And you just start bouncing light, right? I 
I'm saying? You see that? There's no motion that's up and down. It's all pushing. And the deeper you push, it's like a break. Your hand is like a break. You jump light on the trampoline, it's going to be very dynamic. The more you push, the more pressure you get. And that is key. This is a key thing about the physics of how the guitar works that I think eludes most people for their entire playing career. Now, when we approach playing with a pick, the only difference, and this will tie into the later George Benson picking lesson, is we're literally just taking a pick and putting it right there. You just, all right? So if you were to play with your thumb, a simple quasi-chromatic exercise, as a classical or flamenco player, do you see it's a very pushing, and I'm even muting the A string, the D string, the G string, B string, all right, push inward. That's the same motion with the pick. You just, you bounce. It's like you're bouncing on a high wire, you see? You have six high wires. You insert the soleil now. All right, see my little Cirque du Soleil mug. And you're balancing on that high wire. And the best thing, once you get this motion, there's no strings in there to bump into. When Jimmy Page would kind of get grief about his sloppiness, like in Heartbreak or Solo or things, it's because he's probably got the motion going this way. He's bumping the pick into the next string, either above or below. If you're constantly pushing inward, there's no string to hit in there. So this is a huge, you can be reckless. And it's got, and you're not gonna hit another string. You can, the trick is the upstroke and we'll get into that a little today and in future lessons. But the key is always having the guitar move like this. After all, the listener's there. They're not there. They're not, unless maybe some bats hanging in the rafters, right? All right. So let's talk about this very first phrase of Spanish fly. I'm going to give you some examples of other Van Halen tunes as we go, and you can venture off into those tunes, but I want to show you the similarities in his style, some of his habits, some of his innovations, and some of the things he took either knowingly or unknowingly by intuition from things that were done in the past, and he took it to the next level. He took it to a whole new level. For example, this first technique in the beginning of Spanish Fly from Van Halen 2. Let's move this out here for now. Okay. Classical players, flamenco players, have used this technique for hundreds of years, but never quite the way Eddie approached it. In classical guitar play, if you were going to tap a harmonic, the principle begins here. If Say you want to play a melody like this. If you tap an exact octave, all those notes, you will get those melodies with a harmonic. Now, this is one, this is kind of the cheating classical way to do it, using your thumb and first finger. Right? Classical players use their third finger, which is really hard to get any speed going like that. 
And you'll see them so they're using their third finger to pluck back here and touching with the first finger. I don't know where Eddie came with this, if he saw someone do this or what he was thinking. But again, an innovator, and he had such ingenuity in his playing. That's one of the key words we'll keep seeing today is ingenuity. By just tapping, you don't have to pluck it with the thumb as classical players do, or the third finger, right? You can literally just tap it. So there's where we begin. We begin tapping twice at the E string open, second fret, A string, second fret, D string. Now if you notice my fingering, look at my fingering. Most people play an E chord like this, and this is the way I used to play like that. But if you notice my fingers, my second finger is all the way back by the first fret, my fourth finger is by the second fret. For the guitar to sound the most in tune, you want your finger to be right near the fret that it's playing. When you make this chord like this, you see each notes, they're not in the same place, so you're gonna get a little bit different timbre, and the guitar is an instrument that's hard to tune because of the temperament as it is. So you're going to want to touch the guitar as in tune as you can each time you touch it, okay? So I learned this trick from flamenco players, and this is a great trick. Again, you learn a lot from finger style players. Uh, you notice when I'm playing it here with this fingering, my finger, my first finger is taking care of two notes. I'm barring the A and D string at the second fret. And then my second finger is getting that E suspended note. Right there. Right? Why do flamenco players do this? Well, I first noticed it when I was studying. There's a flamenco rhythm called Bolladias. they do when they do this hiscato, the fanning technique with the right hand, and they go, right? They bring the third finger, there's their A chord, but they got to get the A7 so they can just lift it up like that, and then just put that down. So that's a cool way to play an A chord. You're not going to use this when you play rock and roll. by Zeppelin or something like that. If you're doing this kind of like Ice Cream Man, you're gonna, you're gonna use this because you can bar right there, right? But when you're playing a chord, maybe sometimes this chord will serve you. And in this case, for Spanish Fly, the beginning tapping, this definitely serves us because we know it's gonna help this be more in tune with your left hand. Okay, so that's the progression. You're going to go tap, 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 then a single tap on the D string A note, and a single tap on the B open. Just like that. Okay? Beautiful. So right there, you see how Eddie Van Halen took something that classical players did and you can get a little speed, and the Assad family taught me, uh, you know, most classical players I saw do it with the third finger. I learned from the Assad family this technique, right? Which is great, but you can't get that kind of speed that you can if you just, just like it's a drum. You're just playing it as if it's a percussion instrument because guitar is very much a percussion instrument. And here's the proof, right?
Okay, now let's outline that second chord, which is A minor. We're just going. All right, playing C, D, open B. So we're gonna tap that leg. So that's his first phrase. Now he plays Spanish fly on an ovation round backed guitar with nylon strings. I think he got some ball in nylon strings and put them through an ovation steel string guitar, which he said messed the guitar up forever, but he did get the song out of it. And it's a classic solo that went down in history. Ovation guitars, even compared to other acoustic guitars, are very percussive. So that really lends to this tapping when he if you get an acoustic guitar that's an ovation, you try to do this, you're going to go, oh, I'm real close to Van Halen. That's, that's the Van Halen sound. Plus the nylon strings, that gives it a whole vibe on electric guitar. It's a little trickier to get it out, especially on the high strings. But you want to just tap right in the fret, just tapping very lightly. You can just practice it with open strings. I mean, the first time we heard harmonics, it was probably... Right? And right there, some Addy, I see him Influenced by Steve Howe as well. We'll talk about that. But this is a different approach. So now here's Eddie taking it farther. Hendrix did harmonics, right? But Eddie now taking it farther than any guitar player in rock and roll already in just the opening measure of Spanish Fly. Okay, his next phrase, the next cell we're going to break down. All right. Another thing that Eddie brought out that other guitarists had done, I've seen Billy Gibbons do this. Classical players in the past have done this. There was a player way back in black and white, a European guitar player, bringing the right hand onto the neck and tapping to get an extended note. Maybe a note higher than you can reach with your fourth finger, right? Something like that. Just tapping the finger like that. From fools of women and children first. And when he does the vibrato, you're just pulling it, you just put the finger here and you pull down here with your left hand. Right? So, Eddie's next technique in Spanish Fly is just that. Tapping on the neck. And although, again, it had been performed, you might have seen Billy Gibbons do a little... to get that... But Eddie took it to a whole new level, did he not? And it goes something like this. Okay, so that's our cell. Now what's he doing? He's tapping at the 12th fret with the second finger, pulling off to the seventh and the fifth and open. So it's 12, 7, 5, open 7, 12, 7, 5, open 7. Four times. Same thing on the D string. Chromatic walk down right there from E to E flat to D to C to A. Just at the 12th fret, a pedal tone. Again, very classical influence, uh, 
pedal tones of some uh, Paganini. So many classical players did throughout history. So there it is. Okay. Let's get back to some harmonics, but not played like this. Played more how Steve Howe did, except they're right here. That's the next phrase, that's the next cell. We're gonna hit a harmonic, which means you just touch the string ever so lightly with your finger, just laying the finger on the fret at the seventh fret. At the fifth fret, you get two strings, the G and D string. So you're going, same thing, just a string down, bum, 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 then up here to the 12th fret, right there. So you're doing, at the 12th fret, you're hitting two notes. So just cycle that. So the next phrase, and this is where it gets tricky, people, and I've seen, this is where the guitar instructional videos get very vague. And they, he never plays this the same way twice, or it doesn't really show exactly what he's doing. From slowing this down uh, to half speed and really keying in on what Eddie was doing in this next phrase, you hear he starts the track out with his head scratches like, Right? And very eccentric. And later he added the 5150, which is the penal code for uh, crazy, gone crazy. And uh, sometimes acts a little crazy when he's tracking, bringing the crazy out, crazy guitar playing. So you hear him scratch his head, very uh, idiosyncratic at the beginning. He does the tapping lick. He does this tapping lick. He does the harmonics. Now he's getting ready for the first accelerando, okay? Now this first note that he does, and I've seen a lot of people play it a lot of different ways, but again, by studying Eddie's other solos and how he fingers things, you begin to see patterns emerge, all right? Again, a very pattern shape based player. Now, this first lick is gonna go something like this. The first thing you hear, it's almost like he's clearing his throat or like a gulp, like gulp. It's like this. He's just sliding his finger, third finger, A string from the third fret to the sixth fret. Right? That's like the gulp. And that's like the preparation. It's almost like he's setting up. It's almost like someone when someone does a pick scrape or slides their hand getting ready to go into a phrase. So it's like go, and then the next phrase he does is these two notes, sorry, these two strings with the same pattern on both strings. Okay. Okay, so it's fourth fret, first finger, fifth, second, seventh, fourth finger. Okay, now his picking pattern is down, up, down, down, up, down. This is called economy picking or sweet picking. And it's important to hold the pick very loosely. When I hold the pick, I'm holding it so relaxed in my hand. And of course, because of the Benson technique, you can really relax even more. Uh, in Megadeth, I held the pick on the side of the finger with a bent thumb. You can look at the back of the album cover and if you hold a pick like that, like a lot of guys do, you, you got problems. And we can talk about that in the future lesson. But that's not how to hold a pick, okay? So that's for a future lesson because it, it can take, 
take a long, long time to set, suss that out. But if you can kind of look at my hand and see how I'm picking now, you can see the difference. So as I approach this lick, you see that first lick when I did the gulp? I'm resting my pit. That sounds cool, that overtone. On the E string, on below to mute it. And again, I'm bringing my upstroke because it's an upstroke. You got to hit this with an upstroke. So my pick is slanted this way, coming towards the strings. If this is the low E string, I'm going like that with an angle, right? If I'm doing a downstroke, I'm going to go like this, and the pick is going to be angled this way. Your pick is like a paintbrush. It needs to be loose in your finger so that on your downstrokes, it's like this. And on your upstrokes, it's like this. Although we're playing on the edge of the pick like this, like you're cutting butter, you don't cut butter like this with the knife. You cut it with the sharp edge. So I'm on the edge of the pick with this slant. Now I'm going to go down, up, down, down. And that has, when you're going from the A string to the D string, it has, it, you can't fall into the string, sound like it's tripping over your feet. It has to sound like you're alternate picking, even though you're not. You're economy picking, you're saving a stroke. You're going down, up, down, down, up, down. So just practice that. Down. We'll see later when I show you his solo for I'm on Fire, which is very tricky. Tricky to hear exactly the notes he's playing because of the... Progression with the half steps kind of makes it hard when you're listening with the album to hear what Eddie uh, is doing, but I'll show you towards the end of the lesson. So we'll get that bonus on fire. I'm on fire solo note for note here later. And you'll see the similarities. The reason I bring that up now because there's some similarities uh, in on fire to this picking pattern right here. So it's upstroke, down, up, down, down, up, down. So put that together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you hear the chromatic nature, the chromaticism right here. Even though it's like a sign that you hear that chromatic, you see a lot of guys going like that. I don't, Eddie doesn't ever finger things like that when they're trying to show how to play Spanish fly. I've never seen him figure. He may do chromatic walk downs like this. In this kind of ascending fast rapid fire thing, to me, it sounds like he's going go, and then the next note, that downstroke, is going to lead you to an upstroke on the G string B note here at the fourth fret. And you're going to go up, down, up, and you start to see the logic in the choreography of the picking, whether he developed this by accident, whether he was thinking about it strategically or just did it by accident because it felt no faster and easy to play like that. And I had a teacher in Dayton that told me, you know, I was playing some of the Van Halen licks like this. And he's like, don't, you got to alternate pick every stroke that you pick. You can't do that down, down from string to string. And that was a real bad piece of advice that I didn't realize how bad it was and I stopped picking like that and I started doing everything alternate picking up and until I got to GIT in 84 and started studying with Frank Gambale, who's the master of economy picking, the master of sweet picking. And he definitely showed me in no uncertain terms the advantages of sweet picking. So that's what we're doing right there. We're going upstroke, which is hard. A lot of guys aren't hip with starting with an upstroke. Everyone always starting their licks with a downstroke. So this is giving you something to work on. So we're going up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down. Let's take just that much. Let's leave out the gulp for a minute. We know what's happening there. Let's just take this little bit right here. Just cycle that. notes, hear it? 
hear what he's doing right there when he comes back. Up, down, up, down, up. And he picks and then pulls off. Hear that? So just work that phrase. That's what I do. I'll just hone in on a phrase, then I'll uh, move it up and down the neck because Michael Shanker once said, like, people practice a lick in one position, then they can't play it in another position. Right? So, down, up, down, down, up. So that's the first phrase. Mm -hmm. And getting that moment. If you get that motion, almost like you're strumming. Makes sense? And you hear it so clearly, because hey, I got a clean sound, action's high, not sounding like rubber bands. You can hear every note that Eddie played. There it is. So it, the phrase goes, go. He's going to slide up with the first finger like that. Right? Okay. Then your fourth finger is right here at the ninth fret. You're going to play the same shape here, but you're going to play it right here. So he goes. Dun, 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 dun. And the key to play this to get the accents to sound like Van Halen is when you come in here, that's a down stroke and he's hammering. This is one of the habits of Van Halen that we'll see again in uh, On Fire. He does it in Girl Gone Bad uh, when he goes. picks he one note and hammers three on the lower string then he picks all three notes on the next string with up down up which puts you back ready to do a down stroke right and what's he doing there he's just rising in the key of E minor G major Playing one, two, four, playing uh, seven, eight, ten, seven, eight, ten, with up, hammer, hammer, down, sorry, down, hammer, hammer, up, down, up, down, hammer, hammer, up, down, up. Then he moves up here and he plays it in all whole steps. Down stroke, hammer, hammer, up, down, up. So it's. And then same thing, up a step. And then he's going to come back to this position here. All right, so it's. Okay, now, this little sweeping motion that he does. Gypsy jazz players, I mean, classical players have done it with their fingers. Flamenco players will take their third finger and come back on a strum like that. Players have been doing this for a long, long time. You've heard, this is the simplest. You hear all the Ingve offshoot players, right, do that motion. Right, so this sweeping where you're, again, not just going down, down on one string, but you're going down, 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 or, or. What Eddie's playing right there is it's a major seventh, major seventh chord that he's striking backwards, like that. 
just with an upstroke, again with the paintbrush, you're going to let the strings go. It's just going to brush backwards, pushing the strings into the body, just as if you were doing it with your first finger like this. See, if I played it with my first finger, I got to push it to get that sound. There's no upstroke or downstroke happening. That's what you got to get happening with the pick. And I'm going to give you a great little exercise here for strengthening that. What you're going to do is first we're going to go up that, that major seven shape, but then we're going to come back four, three, two, one, and flat fives. Right? So start working that. Just start down low and start going up your guitar neck. Mm -hmm. Then take it across to the lower strings, like right here in this position, you can take it all the way down. So just, and you got to get these upstrokes so they sound as powerful as you're, like a lot of guys who do these sweeping uh, scales. On the way up, it's clear, but on the way down, it sounds like mud. That's just a simple five note pentatonic, but listen how clear it sounds, right? Okay, because I've worked the hell out of my upstroke sweep picking, and that's for another lesson too, but you can begin. This is going to prepare you for that future lesson if you start working the sweep picking. Take it in any position. Okay. So when he comes up, he's going <clears throat> down, down, up, up, down. And that's how you get those. You won't get those accents if you go down, down, like two down strokes or any other way of picking to get the accents to sound how Eddie sounds. You got to go down, up, down, up. Okay. And right there, it's two open strings, E and B. And I do that with an upstroke again, and just resting it into the G string. Then he comes down here to this A minor, same place we were for A Talking Black Love. And he's going to do this little arpeggio sweep maneuver. Again, another sweep picking maneuver. He's sweeping right there. Like that. Let me turn this down a little bit. Right there. And then he's going to go chromatic. So you sweep down. Pull off your third finger, and let's talk about. I got a great compliment from a bass player who saw me teaching this in a previous lesson. It was like, wow, man, I never thought about that. That's great. So I, I really like it that I'm helping bass players <laughs> as well as guitar players. Another trick I learned from the flamenco players, when I saw them making uh, their bar chords and the, the open A chords, and this is something I start, once I learned it, I started asking all my students at GIT, I'd have, you know, 10, 12 students in a day, every hour, just coming out of my private lesson room. And one of the first things I would do to see how their left hand was operating, uh, how much tension they were holding there, was ask them to play a simple bar chord, just like an A major bar chord, like this. And invariably, they, every player, no matter what level, you know, whether they've been playing two years, five years, ten years, they make the chord and their finger is flat when they make the bar chord. And this is wrong. And this is causing you so much stress and making you grip. And that's why when you play lots of bar chords, especially on an acoustic steel string guitar, you're getting strain and pain in your hand. I call it vice grip hand because you're, 
you're using the pressure of the squeeze, which you shouldn't be using to make the bar cord. You just need to lay your hand on the fretboard. There should be no squeezing like this, okay? Here's how you release that. The problem with playing a bar chord and using the flat, pillowy part, key emphasis on the word pillowy, the pillowy part is that as you push this into the fret or the string in the fretboard, it's just going to keep giving and giving and giving and giving, right? That's why you can't make solid contact with the simplest of bar chords and you're straining and you're giving yourself hand cramps and your thumb is just killing you, right? Well, what I finally figured out from flamenco players because they will bar a note and they'll be playing all kinds of counterpoint with their other three fingers while they hold this down, right? All you have to do is roll off the fleshy, pillowy, soft, giving part of your finger to this bone, right to where you feel the bone. It makes it more like a capo, as a, almost like your capo in your neck. You just roll from here to the side bone, and then you're making the chord with no pressure, no strain. You can even take your thumb off, and you're just using you know, the weight of the guitar. Another thing flamenco players will do that we'll talk about as we get into the tapping is lean forward. Lean forward. You lean back like this and you're having to push into the strings. If you lean forward, the weight of the neck will help press. It helps you press. So you just let the, the weight of the guitar do some of the work for you. So roll to the bone and you kind of got to angle your fingers like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Right? Same if you make an E bar chord, instead of playing on the pillowy giving part of your third finger, just roll to the outside bone portion right here. And it's gonna make your chord a lot easier with a lot less stress on your hand, especially if you're playing really fast changes, okay? So that's why I mentioned that here, because you notice I'm on the bone side. I don't want, I mean, to try to do this lick with a flat wouldn't even work anyway, so you want to roll to the side, and that's exactly how I play A chords down here, you know? You play it on the side of your finger, you don't play an A chord with the pad like this and push. On the side of the finger, right? Okay? Now, so we start with your second finger on the seventh fret. You're gonna come through third finger at the seventh fret and pull off. Start with the open A string, just like that. Okay. Then you're gonna rake, sweep, but you're just trying to get this note, the rest of the strings are muted. So it's Chromatic walk down, shift down to the fourth fret. Another scrape right there. Now we're gonna do a little pull off here. Fourth fret, fifth fret, seventh fret. down and he goes that's just like what we did right here at the beginning when we were going he's doing a similar thing right here and pull down again show you a little trick right here that we're because you see how many times he's already picked a note or two and pulled off I'm gonna give you a little uh, melodic motif to work on to help you with this technique all around to help you with your uh, major shape your Ionian mode shape let's check this out right here 
come down here to your low six string and I'm gonna have you play whole steps like this. Third, fifth, seventh. Down, up, down. And do the same thing on the next string. Down, up, down, which means we're sweet picking. We're going down, up, down, down, up, down. And I'm gonna show you, if you don't know this three note per string pattern, I'm gonna show you the fastest way to memorize this. Look at it. First of all, you're gonna take two strings at a time when you memorize any kind of guitar shape or pattern. Right now we're gonna just look at the E and A string, the fifth and sixth string, and we're gonna see that the pattern is symmetrical. We're gonna see how many of Van Halen's motifs are very symmetrical today. So it's just whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step. Look at that, it's the same shape. You just look at that on the street and you see that in your mind. There it is. Just run it up and down the neck and get that shape, all whole steps. Both strings, the exact same fingering. You can finger it sometimes like this with the third finger or the second finger. In this Van Halen example, we'll go in second finger. Now let's come up to the D and G string. These are notes that we're using in Spanish Fly. We got a few more of them coming up. They were the notes that Eddie used right here. Right here. That's the scale shape pattern that he's playing, right? So we're gonna go four, five, seven, four, five, seven. And you see that that's the exact same shape. How these two strings were symmetrical, these two strings are symmetrical. And we've just played do. Down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. All right, so memorize these two now. And then sew it together. Okay, let's look at the top two strings, B and E. very symmetrical in that the pattern is the same fingerings, but we've moved from here. We jump to the fifth position with the first finger, and now we're playing one, three, four, one, three, four, five, seven, eight, five, seven, eight. So you see how to memorize this? Two strings at a time. And there is the pattern where Eddie took This is just the next lower logical pattern in that mode. Okay? So there's your scale ascending. Down, up, down, 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 down, up. Now I talked about in the Gary Moore lesson, and I'll talk about it again, that the weakest stroke for most guitar players and I bet uh, most of you out there are no different, is the upstroke. That's why so many songs are all, right, downstrokes, right? You know what I'm leaning into there, right? Lots of downstrokes. Working upstrokes is critical. That exercise I gave you, that'll go a long way to helping you. We'll work on the upstroke a lot more in future lessons. But because a lot of players, especially in the 80s, uh, weren't really working their upstroke that detailed, that's why a lot of techniques evolved, I think, like hybrid picking, tapping, pulling off and hammering on instead of picking every note. Because you can can pull off the note and that's what a lot of these guys were doing on the descent of their scales where they would pick every note going up and we're thinking about players like Eddie, Randy, Ingve, Jakey e. Lee, Warren Martini. so many players would pick every note going up but on the way down 
they would incorporate picking and pulling off like this. Pick, pick, pull, pick, pick, pull. Going down, up, pull. Down, up, pull. And that's how they got that really fluid sound. So that's something you can practice. Is that kind of, because we're gonna, it's gonna help you as we get into later licks in Spanish fly. Like this one. Right? You see what he's doing right there. Okay? He's doing sweep picking and this technique that I'm showing you in the pull off. He's doing a combination of sweep picking and hammer ons and pull offs strategically placed just how his natural style evolved. Okay, so that's key. Because right here in this next progression, right there you see, he's all the way down to get that speed, he's not picking. That's the lick. He's coming to, okay? I'll do it in slow motion, because again, this is one of the licks that aren't, uh, it's not clearly explained anywhere out there, so let's get it straight today once and for all. See how I did that? Okay, so once he gets down here, So that he does this little looping lick. Just two times. Then he goes into that. So he's five, four, pull off. Seven, four, to five. That's a great one to move up. Just get used to how that feels. And you see I have to get, and I'm barring as I go across. So that's an exercise to work out, to get that so it sounds separate. You don't want it to sound like that. You want it to sound like. Right, so then he comes down, so it's. Let me do that again. I don't want to leave out that script there, so it's. Now this next lick, sorry, I have a hair in my pick. Don't you hate that when you get one of your long hairs in your pick? Okay, so he does this twice. Right there. Five pulls off to four, to seven, upstroke. He does this really fast. It goes. It's that fast. It's like. I mean, you could play it here, but it sounds. It's easier to get it right there. All right. And once he does that lick, which is four, five, seven, and then the note on the B string. D note, like that, so it's just practice that much, up, pull, down, up, down, hammer, up, sorry, that's a down stroke, down, and you can even get a little harmonic out of there, right, if you use gain, so, Then he goes into the next cell. This next cell is very flamenco sounding. 
and it's basically that pattern that I just showed you right here. It's right out of this G major shape. It's right here. You're going to go. Now the thing about Eddie's playing is that accents are everything. I mean, first you figure out uh, the notes. Let's figure those and then we'll get the accents so we're going. See right there. So you're going to go hammer pick four, five, seven hammer. Then he picks every note just like here except with a different picking pattern because he's going and there's the sweet pickup again. Down, up, down, down, up. And you, if you don't do the sweet picking, you'll never get this pattern right. It's got to go down, up, down, down. Down, up, down, up, down. That's why you need like that don't five seven four five seven and he just goes back and forth between those two uh, melodic motifs now you hear me accenting how it So much of Eddie's style that accenting like that. And then he comes down. Into this hammering part. And this is when I say. Don't make the work harder on yourself. Lean forward and let the neck help you. This is a great left hand. All whole steps. Again, it's right out of this pattern that we talked about earlier. But remember, his first lick, he didn't stick to the pattern he went. So he's out of the pattern. We'll talk a little bit about that more in a minute. But he's right here, these three notes, and he's just going second finger, don't want to put pressure what's going to give you the momentum is your how the accelerando how fast you tap and just the quickness of the tap and it's just like Bruce Lee with his punch as soon as he punched he would let all the tension out of his hand you have tension then you go limp as soon as you make the attack as soon as you make that attack your hand needs to go limp right so that you're not holding the tension in your left hand. It's just the momentum, the ferocity of your articulation, your attack, that's gonna give you that smooth rolling pull off, then move it up. And it's four times each. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And he goes, This is where we're going to go into the tapping. Now, we're doing wide tapping here. So again, this is a strain on your hand because you're stretching. We're going to be tapping at the 12, pulling off to the 5th, and then our 4th finger, our pinky, at the ninth. So we don't want to make the work hard, so don't lean back like this and push. Lean forward and let the weight of the guitar it easy for you, right? So it's going to be two times on each the A and D string, same pattern. Sorry, three times. One, two, three. One, two, three. 
Okay, so he's going all the way across. Okay, and right here, you're just dropping your fourth, your first finger down to the fourth fret, but leaving your fourth finger at the ninth. So in slow motion, he's going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. Right. Sorry, start. I went to the last phrase. It's right here on the A string. Okay, then he's going to come up right here, 15th fret, same exact trip, but just transposed. He's going to come down here, the same thing we just did, but move down a set of strings. Right? And this again, my strings are really high, so that like most guys who play this tapping have really low strings. I like high action, so I'm going to fight it here, and uh, that's life. And, but once you get your gain in there, you know, things get a lot easier, right? right? So, let's take the phrase from the beginning, and then we'll show you the end tapping, and we're almost done with Spanish Fly, this whole piece. So it's here. Come up here. Okay, then you come here. Now you're going to come down. Same place we started. Then drop the fourth finger. Then you're going to come here. Ten, three, seven, and then drop again, and then okay. Then he comes down here. Slow down, slightly retard it. As you're tapping fast. Right? And he slows it down. Taps with the second finger. Okay? Now, we're right back to the beginning. We bring our fingers across and we're gonna just tap that simple arpeggio, but this time we don't do the A minor chord, we're just gonna go. Right? And that's Spanish fly in its entirety, people. So if I noticed we got all kinds of people coming in, joining the chat. If you missed any of the beginning, the whole lesson's gonna be archived youtube.com slash Jeff Young tube. You'll be able to go through and get all the notes of uh, so far we've covered ain't talking about love. We did some light up the sky picking. Uh, we showed you some of the uh, fools. All the Spanish fly. Again, talking about the pattern player. Look at Eddie right here in hot for teacher. What's his patterns? What were we just playing? Weren't we just playing right here? Well, what's hot for teacher? On this string, so there's the first two licks of hot for teacher.
12th fret, 3rd, 7th. Then he moves up. Then he does it here. See the pattern, symmetrical player that he is. And check this, even symmetrical here. As he goes down, I mean, these, these, he's just taking this pattern all the way down, so it's not technically a scale, but all the notes work, especially because the band stops, he's by himself. There's no chordal uh, notes underneath to fight with any of those notes. see the deeper we explore the deeper we dive dive it down what a pattern based player mr van halen can be right just making sure i got all my notes and we're right on track here cool all right well let's show you a little more uh eddie van halen tactics let's Let's expand more. We talked about women in love earlier. I showed you the arpeggio picking part. And I just love this melody so much that I want to show you. And I don't see a lot of people playing this song or teaching this song. And it's a beautiful chordal melody. Again, we've looked at a lot of Eddie's lead work and his shred style. But let's look at some of the most beautiful chordal work out of any uh, rock guitarist in history. So he starts out this, and I don't have the echo set, I can probably get a little more vibe. So that part's just tapping. I just showed you the notes. Right? But now let's talk about this next beautiful chord progression and how you're going to perform this. That's the first move. You're just going to tune your guitar. You're going to hit the D note here and an open D. So you go. Now this is the key. You got to go down stroke, up, down, up to get this. If you try to play it down, up, down, you're going towards a string that doesn't exist. There's no string down there, right? And plus we want to keep it, we're going down, up, down, up, and that gets your string right there. If you go down, up, up, down, your pick is right on the B string ready to go. Hit those beautiful harmonics at the seventh fret, so it's... Play that with me. Then the next motion goes... And he is doing a downstroke here. You're going to go B, B, down, up. Down, down, up. Down, up, down, up. And that puts you right in the next place for the next picking pattern that you got to do. So you're going down, up, down, up, down, down. Down, up, down, up. Then slide the first finger down from A to A flat on the G string. Listen to that beautiful chord right there. That should, right? Just a minor triad with your fourth finger playing D flat, second finger playing E, first finger playing A flat. Same thing. 
thing right here. Except you're gonna do the harmonic at the fifth fret. So it's. Right? Again, same motion. Then come down to a C. So it's down, up, down on the open G, B. With your fourth finger going G, pull off to E. D pull off to the E. You see, he's there's the same sauce that he used in Spanish Fly, right? But now he's just going between the E and the sus. To the A, to the D. Then he plays it again. Chords people. Check out these chords. Second finger on the fifth fret, first finger on the G string, fourth fret, every other string open. Got your Eddie Van Halen phase 90 chorus on. About 10 o'clock. Then he comes down here. Same shape, but down here. To the B, sorry. Now he's playing fourth fret, A string, first finger on the G string, second fret. And listen to that chord. That's why Van Halen's songs were so original. No one ever played these chords before like that. Fourth finger there. Then to uh, C on the third A string, first on the A note on the G string, fourth finger, resolve to the E. women in love right there but I don't want to stop there we're on a roll here <laughs> we got the good connection streaming had a little trouble getting going today but we pulled it off this is live <clears throat> and we're, we're just getting getting used to this whole YouTube live thing but if you enjoy these live lesson sessions I'll do another one next week how about Ingve Malmsteen explored all right, we'll dive deep into some of his uh, really tricky stuff. I think I can really help you with uh, some Ingve stuff because I think probably Van Halen and Ingve are the two players that I've figured the most note for note stuff off their records by ear and, and otherwise. And I actually got to have a private lesson with Ingve backstage uh, on the Alcatraz tour, so we'll talk about that next week. And the things that I learned by, again, seeing a player that close up, I remember when I started playing flamenco guitar and 
I had played classical guitar, but there's a whole different right hand tactic and technique from between flamenco and classical. And I remember Sergio Assad, I was in Brazil in uh, San Juan de Boa Vista at the family's house and working on some flamenco stuff. And he's like, have you ever really sat with a flamenco guitarist and watched them play? Because he, he was basically telling me politely that you don't got the right hand technique, you're not attacking the guitar properly. As soon as I got with a flamenco guitar teacher, I knew what he was saying and I figured out the difference in the touch and the difference of approach. So, again, being able to watch Van Halen, you know, first row on those first two, three tours, and being able to sit in a room with Ingve or Frank Gambale, that's when you really get, you know, that microscopic vantage to see how they're doing what they're doing. Right? Let's talk about on fire. I want to talk about crazy chord progressions and patterns. I can leave the phase shifter on because Eddie used a, 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 his phase 90 on the solo. So check it out. And you're gonna again see, I wanted to show you this solo and not just come on and teach Spanish fly by itself, but show you some peripheral and parallel Van Halen things. So you, again, you can start seeing the habits of Eddie Van Halen and the things that are very much part of his style that carries on from album to album to album and, and maybe some things you might wanna incorporate in your own playing. Like for example, you know, there's a difference in how it sounds if you're gonna pick every note or hammer these, just pick one note and pick those notes like he does here. On Fire is another great example, and it's a tricky one to, to figure out exactly what he's doing because of the half step notes in the rhythm that make it really kind of hard to hear exactly what the lead is doing, but check this out, because it's pretty tricky, and it really shows you that crazy genius of Eddie. And now think about, we're in the key of E here, and our notes in the solo are E, F sharp, G, A, B, and C, right? But look at the notes that he uses in the scale, sorry, in the solo, and how he changes the patterns, the shapes, but while doing a very similar right hand picking approach. So we're gonna be, uh, first thing he's gonna do, very similar to Spanish Fly. We're gonna hammer on. That's his first phrase, he goes hammer, comes up here, that's all pit. And as you see with Eddie, it's the strategic choreography of when he picks every note, when he picks just the first note, or when he'll do the one, two, three, pit. and that picking every note but the pull off on the end, just as we covered. Earlier, right? Now check it out right here in this on fire solo. He's gonna go hammer, pick, and it's seven, six, seven, nine. Let's just cycle that together. And why he did that came up here because it puts it in position for his second melodic motif. See that? steps, hammer, pick, 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 cycle that, 
Exactly. And the next one, he's right here and he goes. Hammer, pick, pick, pick. Then comes up here to the eighth fret. So no pattern repeating so far on the way up. Okay, what did he do right there? Seven, eight. Just to give it a little pause. So what do we got so far? Okay, now he's going to come up to the ninth fret. Now this is a different flavor. He changes it around. He's going to do the same thing here. And he comes down here, but he plays this rise here to put him in position for the next melody that's going to come on the 10th fret. Just cycle that. Then he comes up here to the 10th fret. 10, 12, 14, 10, 12, 14. And then the last one, 12th fret. Right? And he picks every note right there. So in slow motion, the solo to I'm on fire. Down straight, see how? Down, down on the fifth. Cool. That's Eddie Van Halen in a nutshell, people. We've covered a lot of ground today. A lot, a lot of ground. If you got any questions, didn't this guitar sound great for this lesson? You know, there's a kinship between Eddie Van Halen and Dimebag. Not just that they were friends. You know, Eddie put his, his guitar in Dime's coffin at the funeral. But uh, both very strong rhythm players. Two of the strongest rhythm players in heavy rock. And uh, this, that's why this guitar sounds so great on Van Halen's style. I think it's very similar to his shark fin guitar as used and seen on in the uh, Women and Children First album, right? Very similar flavor here. And uh, great guitar for Van Halen, anything that ails you. And of course, we talked about the Floyd Rose earlier in the show. And here it is, here it is, with now with the tunematics. Didn't have these tuners when I had that first prototype Floyd Rose, added that later. And of course, some songs I hear about it later, he's in drop D, I can't play the whole tune, because he's in drop D tuning on that. And when he goes down, all that stuff is actually in drop D nose. Questions, put them in the chat right now. 
I want to cut this because we got a great signal. I only saw a couple times where it said it was uh, having buffering issues. Hopefully the whole lesson looks clear when we watch it back and I won't have to do it again. <laughs> yeah. Remember that chord, who, who came with that first, Eddie or Randy? It's either from Girls Gone Bad Was it Randy that did that chord for him? All right, who was it? Who was the first one? one in the future, right? Do another one next week. If you want a Skype private lesson, hit me up. Jeff Young Music at gmx.com. I didn't show my little Van Halen pen. You completed the lesson, people. If you made it this far, each you get a little Van Halen reward, a little pen there. I'll pin it right on your shirt. Cool. So if you got any questions, comments, Jeff Young Music at gmx.com, leave them in the chat. I'll pin those Michael Anthony jams that we did together. If ain't talking about love, somebody get me a doctor and running with the devil. I'll pin those in the chat. Look forward to seeing you again. Tell your friends and loved ones that Guitar Sessions Live is in action. Share the video if you belong to any guitar groups, Van Halen groups. They might like this video. Check out my other links. My main portal is instrumentalguitar.net. That'll take you into my main colorful portal. My music's on sale. I hope you'll pick up my new single, In the Flesh, at jeffyoungsongs.com. It's definitely got some Van Halen influence in there. My radio show every Tuesday night, played some Van Halen on the show this week, jeffyoungjams.com. If you want to tip me out for the tips today that I gave you, struggling musicians and all that, we're not going to be able to play gigs or tour, looks like for some foreseeable long ass time. Maybe someday we'll be able to get out and play live again, but I'll be doing these lessons. I'm even going to be doing some live performances on stage it. So watch my social media. But if you want to tip me out for uh, the lesson, if you really enjoyed it, you can either send it direct to PayPal, which is paypal.me slash Jeff Young Music. Anything helps from a dollar, five, 10, 20, whatever you can afford, 100, 100,000. Or if you don't have PayPal, just go to ko-fi, ko-fi.com slash Jeff Young GTR. And that's a direct interface to my PayPal and you can buy me a tea. And you can just up how many teas you want to buy, you know, five, 10, 50, whatever you want to buy. And that goes direct to my uh, PayPal as well. It's just an interface much better than Patreon, which has an F business rating. And uh, why I got off Patreon, I'm on Ko-Fi now. So ko-fi.com slash JYGTR, 
or paypal.me slash jymusic. Any donations are appreciated. It lets me keep making music and keep the radio show going. And uh, I've got about seven, eight new tracks to get out to you guys as soon as possible. And uh, we'll use some of that money in the studio. Right on. So thank you very much for listening. I really appreciate uh, your open ears, your attention. This lesson will be here. You can come back, work through it slowly, use the YouTube speed feature to slow it down, to get every note. I tried to give you as much as I could as, uh, as far as what the fret strings and make it as clear as possible. But if there's any part that you need a little extra clarification, you can either write me privately, schedule a Skype lesson, or just take the video and slow it down as slow as you need to and work through it. Again, slow equals fast. You know, I think you saw by the, the mode of today's lesson, if I take each thing really slowly and deliberately, you get to really see what the notes are instead of, okay, I got most of it, but what's that part? I, those notes aren't really clear how my teacher explained it to me and I want to dissuade with all that and really take time to show you guys each of these things so you really can take it in again whether you're going to use it in a Van Halen song or you're going to use it in your own songwriting or just for fun as a hobby these are all great tactics that I've shown you both in the Eddie Van Halen Explored and the Gary Moore Explored you may want to go catch up on that as well it's been a pleasure being here with you. It's so much fun. The only, uh, you know, ex exasperating, uh, stressful part is when I first came on, I did two of these and the stream wasn't strong. And so this is the third try today, but we got it. And I appreciate your patience. And we've had a pretty much an excellent connection for the whole show. So that I think we got a good take here. I'll leave this up on YouTube for weeks and years to come. Feel free to come back and refresh and use it to help your playing and help you have most of all the most fun that you can have while playing without stress or strain up your arms and stiffness as you play. We want to be relaxed. Like uh, my Tallulah's right here sleeping. Let me get her to say goodbye. When your animal, your cat, your dog, your child is sleeping and you see them totally relaxed. Just totally like this, like this. That's how you want to be when you're picking your fastest, when you're playing so fast, you just need to be as relaxed as you can be. I read a great quote from Alan Holdsworth that where he said, I don't, I don't try to see any difference between playing slow or fast or between the easier parts and the most difficult parts because you know, our caveman instinct, the fight or flight instinct that's born into us, that's the biggest thing we have to overcome as guitarists. And we don't even think about, these are the subconscious things that you really almost need a teacher or someone to kind of stop you. So you think, oh yeah, stop and think about it. But when the hard part comes, our natural fight or flight tendency is to, okay, here comes the hard part, is to stiffen up and hold our breath and here we go, when what is needed is the act exact opposite. Because if you hold your breath and tense up, you're stressed and strained and you're, you're not flowing. Here comes the hard part. <sighs> and then go. That's how it's done. Here comes the hard part. You release all the tension. You breathe out and then you do your, right T? That's how it is. So think about that as you're approaching all these motifs and melodies and uh, different Van Halen tactics that I showed you. And in future lessons, no matter how hard anything is we cover, the, the goal is when you go uh, to practice it on your own, to find that relaxation, that dynamic relaxation where we're at full attention and dynamic and ready to attack, but at the same time relaxed. That balance on the razor, razor's edge of dynamic relaxation, that's what takes you 30, 40 years to learn as a guitar player. You know, any monkey can learn how to play fast or you know, play a tune, but to learn that and to carry that through your playing for a whole show, 
Then you're, then you're singing, then you're doing something. Right, T? So for Frenchie T, she needs to go outside and go potty, but I mean, she's a French bulldog, so she actually goes wee wee. She goes outside and she's gotta go wee wee. We'll be back with you next week. Watch my social media. This is so much fun. I'll give you a clue on some of the upcoming lessons before I let you go. Just some notes I've made. How about, we did Gary Moore, we did Eddie Van Ham. We're doing Ingve next week. I'll show you some Bigfoot, Too Drunk to Live, maybe some other stuff from Ingve. That'll be a really valuable lesson for you, especially getting that right hand together. Uh, how about some country licks a la Buckethead? How about a lesson on uh, fluidity and economy picking, the George Benson picking style? How about uh, some Steely Dan lead work? I was going to break down Elliot Randall's Reeling in the Years. Uh, Steely Dan, that's a... Jimmy Page says that's his favorite guitar solo of all time, and it's a beast. And I thought that's a whole lesson right there. So uh, how about some Steve Morse? I got a lesson plan called Morse Code. I'm gonna show you a really, really complex, bitchy Steve uh, Morse um, motif. It was It's a little triad melody that he wrote to warm up before shows. It's like he says, if I can play this, this, uh, this, uh, it's a composition. I mean, it's very beautiful. You could perform it live and people would say, wow, that's a beautiful classical sounding guitar solo. It's something he used backstage to, to warm up and make sure that he said, if I can play this, I can play anything in my set. So you do this Morse lesson, I bet you master this Morse uh, lesson. It's gonna really help the rest of your uh, your set list and the rest of the songs you play. I actually, he came to GIT and I asked him to play it for us and he had forgot how to play it. So I was, after the class, showing all the my friends and students at GIT, what, what's the Steve Morse thing? So I was teaching them and I'll, I'll teach it to you too. How about a lesson on gypsy guitar? All the exotic gypsy scales, harmonic, major, fri the Phrygian dominant, the full-blown gypsy scale which has some chromaticism in it. How about uh, blues on a dime lesson? We'll do a blues lesson. I call it blues on a dime because blues sounds great on this Dean dime guitar. We'll do a lesson on blues. How about uh, finger style flamenco versus classical? We could do some finger style work. Uh, even if you play electric, that lesson could help you. A lesson on use of chromaticism. We definitely saw some chromaticism today but I can definitely give you a lesson that would help you out on that. Maybe we could do like chromatics and diminished in one lesson. And then a lesson on mast, M-A-S-T, which I learned from Roger Fisher of Heart. And mast stands for making sure that your playing always has these four elements, meaning, accuracy or articulation, sensitivity, or feeling and technique. And if you keep in mind and try to integrate all those elements, meaning, articulation, accuracy, sensitivity, and technique into everything you play, you know, it's only up from here, people, right? So thank you so much for joining us. Tallulah's staring at me like, let's get this potty show on the road. Just letting you know in the lesson today, before I had the Van Halen MXR Phase 90 first in line. Uh, the Johnny Winter Texas Screamer, if I ever turned on the game, that's what that was, the Texas, uh, that's amazing. Love that, uh, very organic sounding. Then I got the best clean overdrive boost. It's not an overdrive, but it's uh, a Boss GE7 Equalizer modified by XTS in Nashville. And that's just, a, I've had that on the whole time and I just have everything set flat. I boost some 800 and then I can boost that, uh, the volume. If I want to step on that for a solo, I didn't have it too boosted today because we didn't, I don't need to get up over a band in here. This room is so loud. I'm not even on one on my Friedman. I'm on like half of a half on both the clean and dirty sound because it would just be so loud in this room. And then I have the TC Electronic Flashback 4 set on a Randy Rhodes-esque space 
echo, kind of like the rolling space echo of yesteryear. And uh, that's it. Mostly playing on the clean sound most of the lesson. Uh, kind of a dumble, you know, tone on my clean kind of Stevie Ray Vaughan Hendrix. And then the brown channels, brown Van Halen. This amp is actually was styled and designed. It's a 50 watt modeled after Eddie's amp, his first, you know, original amp that he used on the early Van Halen albums. Dave Friedman did Eddie's pedal board and he was able to look inside Eddie's amp and this amp was a recreation of that. And when it gets loud, it sounds very Van Halen. It's a little, when you turn amps down, they get a little fizzy and the distortion down so low, but, uh, as it cranks up and of course many videos on my YouTube you can hear the tone and you'll hear the tone on my new single in the flesh on sale now jeffyoungsongs.com to lose just staring at me right here so we're going to conclude this Eddie Van Halen lesson thank you so much people for joining I'll see you next time tell all your friends about the lesson I'm going to watch it back hopefully it all came out good and I don't have to do it again for you I did it last week. If you saw the previous Van Halen lesson I did last week, it was great. The lesson went great, but I did it straight through YouTube without an encoder. And there was every time I would play or talk, it was like just staticky. And I didn't want to leave you guys with that. You could get through the lesson and still understand it, but I'm a perfectionist. So we did it again today. I'm praying it was all smooth, no buffering issues. And we'll leave this up and you guys can all enjoy it. Leave any questions, concerns, compliments in the chat, anything you want me to answer and check back. I'll pin some more stuff as soon as I get off and go through this and edit the video. I'll put those Van Halen videos of me and Michael Anthony jamming Balls Deep and Rock and some other stuff you may need to check out. And for this week, from the Treehouse Studios in Babylon, New York, it's Jeff Young saying adios muchachos over and out boa noite a vida zane see ya